friends, welcome to episode 162 of the No Clip Podcast. This one coming in super hot. I know we t- look. I feel like already every week we talk about weather too much. We're just a bunch <laughs> of old motherfuckers. Right? How is the weather, Jesus? It's bloody warm today, isn't it? And then you know, like a bunch of old weirdos. And uh, but like legit, legit, we had force majeure. We had some. We had some. Uh, uh, some some acts of God happening as well around these day, around these parts uh, with the big old storm that affected all three of us. No less though, Jeremy Jane, who has just gotten electricity and internet back after like what four days? It was four days, no power, sitting in the dark, reading nice. Blood Meridian by candlelight, Jesus. like a fucking cowboy. Uh, <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was. I ran out. So I'm on an electric well pump. So I ran out of running water oh, on actually, day four. Okay, all right. And uh, and I was, was like, empty. oh no, now it's getting serious. And then Damn. power came back on as an act of God. An hour later. Wow. Were you uh, were you like uh, boiling? Did you still have gas? Did you, you still have a range available? I still had gas. Uh, okay. Yeah. I I couldn't find my lighter, and I had a oh, I had no. two boxes of matches. I had. The, <laughs> I, I had the waterproof backpackers matches and I had the regular like 50 yes. cent diamond matches and the waterproof backpackers matches did not work. I don't know. The shitty regular matches worked. What if I was in the woods? What if this 100%. was an emergency? Scenario? I'm going to call them and complain. What if you had like trapped your arm in a rock or something? <laughs> what if I was in a to... 127 hours exactly. situation and I had to burn my arm off? <laughs> Just like he did. Yeah, in, exactly. I haven't seen that... the movie, but I assume that's what happened. Exactly. I think last week we talked about how I was uh, worried that the water might come in. Um, it got pretty bad that night. Uh, I was outside until five in the morning with a sub pump <laughs> trying to get the water to not... A sub pump which uh, since since then has got burnt out doing someone else's house as well. So it was clearly not really meant to be used outside. It was like a... Because the water wouldn't go high enough, you'd use a real sub pump with like a plumb line in it. So I had to use like basically what was effectively like what people have when they have like a pool with one of those like covers on it, and the water sits on top. It's like that that thing that gets the water off the cover. It was like basically one of those. But I was up until five in the morning. I was fucking miserable. At about two o'clock, it stopped raining, and I was like, "Oh my god, I might go to bed." And then just as I was going to bed, the rain started super bad again, and I had to go back out. I was just like outside in like a like head to foot. Like like high vis rain mac like a worker, but underneath that in my pajamas because I just gotten dressed and I had to run outside, um, with like no socks and a pair of wellies, just like turn and I had to turn the sub bump on because it has no plumb line, so like it it doesn't turn on automatically when the water level gets high enough. So I had to just sit there and eyeball it and go like, yeah, it's like every ten minutes I turn it on for like five minutes and turn it off, or every two and it'll be off for two minutes and then turn it on for it's fucking nightmare i know that shit is miserable but like now looking back on those experience like the four days the sump pump it's like in the moment those things suck so hard but then like a year down the line you'd be like i oh, remember when i was like dressed like a grave digger knee deep in rainwater it's, like, <laughs> it's exactly it's the texture of life exactly yeah. well said without it there would be it would be nothing smooth sailing is you know what do we learn from that and so the next day we basically we had a crew coming in on Saturday to basically put in a proper sub pump and to try and remember I found the end of the fucking pipe. Remember I was like so happy. <laughs> yeah. I found it. it was the fucking wrong pipe. It was not the pipe. So I was like fucking crestfallen. Thankfully these guys, when they were digging the, the, the pipe out for this sub pump found the other pipes. So and now that pipe is clear. It was fucking miles away from where I was looking. Um, uh, and also the sub pump is there. So now I'm like, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Uh, but, then we were like, oh, we planned this trip to Tahoe like months ago. We can maybe go now because like I'm not feeling super anxious about leaving the house during this fucking storm. And then on the way to Tahoe, which is about three and a half hour drive from like where we are, right, Jeremy? It's like, you know, you go yeah. to Sacramento. Once you get to Sacramento, it's like an hour, let's say, to get to Truckee, which is where I was going. From Sacramento, it took six hours <laughs> because no. we, we were on I-80 on the Donner Pass, which is where famously a bunch of poor <laughs> people moving across the country in years of yore uh, died uh, and had, had to resort to cannibalism to stay alive. Um, uh, we were on the Donner Pass and there were so many cars spinning out that they closed the fucking road behind us. So we were in, there was one moment where there was two hours where we were in complete gridlock, did not move an inch. 
It was like <laughs> insane. That's and a it was, nightmare. It was like one of those things where like, if we knew it was going to be six hours, it probably would have been more stressful. But all the time we were like, it's, it's going to start moving, right? Like, it's not going to, you know, eventually it's going to start moving. And like, I didn't put chains on because I've got a Jeep with four wheel drive and it doesn't have snow tires, but it has all weather tires and they always wave me through. So I'm like, they're always like, ah, oh, you're good enough. You're fine. But I'm, I'm always a little bit worried when I'm, you know, that maybe I'm not, I don't have as much grip as I'd like. And there was like black ice in spots. It was fucking nasty so. how close did you come to cannibalism let's that's the real question in donner pass i mean the, the vibe is there already it's a latent ambiance of the donner pass it's uh, uh we had a lot of snacks we had we had <laughs> when you have a kid you bring five times as many snacks for this exact reason she was amazing she was in the back seat with her screen and was just chill she was like i'm used to fucking 12 hour flights to ireland dad don't worry about this shit i got it um at one stage uh i needed a take a piss real bad during that you know, two hour um, bit where we didn't move and I finally saw some I was like I don't want to be the first one to do it and then I saw the guy like two, two cars over from us going to do it and I was like oh thank Christ someone's going to go do it and I was like I don't want to because like in Ireland we're like you know piss on the side of the road anywhere basically it's no problem but I felt I always feel a little bit weird about it for some reason over here I don't want to be like put in jail. It's like jaywalking. Like I always think I'm going to get put in jail for like weird American laws that I don't know about. Yeah. Like, it's like jaywalking with your dick out. It's basically that. Yeah. Cause like, you know, it's not like I'm going to walk out into the fucking tundra. Like I'm going to do it fairly close to the road. Cause I also don't want to freeze my dick off or like fall in a crevasse or something. So your man goes over and does it. And then as he's coming back, I go, that was a good idea. And he said, as your Jesus, you have to go, you have to go sometime. And I was like, Oh my God, he's Irish. He's the you only like, Irish. It's only two Irish. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome he was from cork he was from west cork billy his name was lovely fella we were uh we met several times on the road every time we'd stop it'd be like two more miles down the road and we'd all have been in traffic and everything and then we stopped again and somehow billy was always beside us and he'd get out of his car and go oh how you doing lads yeah so very fun uh frank how was your how was your you guys down in la seem to get the real shitty rain like the the or maybe just la is particularly bad at getting rid of it it's like the desert it's like there's concrete everywhere there's nowhere for the rain to go yeah thankfully like where where i am in like south orange county is okay but i had friends who did lose power whose friends lived like in like long beach area where there's like flooding warning uh people in san diego got tornado warnings like we're not used (laughs) we're not used to weather but i'm i i I fared okay our internet was out wednesday morning um so uh which let me say, uh, my Xbox Game Pass game was not working. <laughs> oh no! When, when the when so I don't know, but I don't know. So Wait, when the, when the world problem. yeah yeah when the world ends, Game Pass will die with it. Yeah, I'm not. What the hell? We got to change that. I didn't know that's horrible. I I, um, I don't what know. The, don't worry, you'll be able to play all those games on a PlayStation soon enough. Anyway, God, all the Game yeah. Pass. You know I get I mean? it now. Like, I get it now. I, I was I was so offended. Anyway, but <laughs> I know Jeremy was trying to read Blood Meridian. I was trying to play. I was trying to finish Fallout Four comparable nice. no but uh i Same feel like I, I yeah i have no, i have nothing to complain about i feel like i was okay um but i know a lot of other people had way more hardships so i'm i'm i'm, I'm okay um but um glad I to hear it couldn't ride my bicycle so that still sucks still waiting well, for it to d- clear up don't worry jeremy has ridden enough bicycle yeah, for all yeah. of us <laughs> yeah i had to drop my car off at the mechanic this morning uh and uh it's it's going there is fine on a bike because it's all downhill but coming back oh, it's, no. oh, it's no. like eight to ten miles uphill through wine country it's eight miles it's, 10 miles. Yeah, what? it's like it's like eight and change there's oh, a faster no. route but it's uh it's like famously narrow and dangerous Haunted. and it's wine country so everyone's drunk or drinking wine yeah, on the road sure. in their big trucks and stuff uh so yeah, I literally I got off of my bike after riding eight miles uphill probably ten minutes ago. So if I if I wow. look a little disheveled, viewers uh, on the on the YouTube side, please forgive me. Uh, if I look a little disheveled, it's because I spent a lot of yesterday crying <laughs> because oh, of because of the passing of our dear friend Hero the Cat, Hero Cato Cato K, uh, who was in the very first no clip trailer, Jeremy, if you remember, of course, he was in, he was in two shots, I believe. Uh, of the no clip trailer he was in a video i posted last week he was uh in many docks over the years as was his brother mischief who is still alive and kicking upstairs uh but yeah hero had been sort of declining for a little while he's a he's an old boy he's in his 16th year well 17th year i guess he was 16 and unchanged 16 and a bit um 
uh, yeah, so we had to make the call yesterday. And it was a pretty easy call. He was pretty sick. He got sick in like two days. Something happened to him. He had like an infection. Um, yeah, so yeah. Bummer, oh, bummer. I'm, but, I'm so sorry, dude. Hey, we were all friends with Hero, right? He was a... Yeah. He was a very jovial boy. He was, he was, you could pick, he never scratched anyone, never bit anyone. He was sort of a rotund gentleman. He was like a large creamsicle fat boy. Um, uh, and you could like pick him up and he'd just fucking sit in your hands and be angry at you forever, which is great. Um, yeah. So thank you to all the lovely, very mess, uh, very kind messages I got of folks in the no clip discord. Um, community was of course throwing up their hero emojis. We have his sort of like, uh, f- hundred yards stare emoji, which is kind of how Hero lived his life. He was kind of like a like ob- oblivious to people, you know. He was a, he was a beautifully selfish cat. He just wanted you to rub him. He didn't want to give anything back. He was just like, I'll just be here and round, and you can rub me, and you'll enjoy it as much as I will. And he was true. Uh, so thanks for all the amazing Discord emojis yesterday, and thanks for all the messages on Twitter. Uh, yeah, um, there you go. Life goes on. I'm not going to sit here and complain about my cat when F- Frank has, in, you know, uh, was going through everything la- at the end of last year. Put, you know, things are in context, but um, I definitely empathize with you a lot more as well, Frank. Just having even a a, a modicum of uh, of of grief uh, over the past 24 hours. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think that's why people are so kind when this thing this stuff happens because they know how it feels, right? So they're all very uh, sweet about it. So yes. Anyway, life goes on. Hero, you will always be in our hearts, and if not, you will be on a lot of weird YouTube videos about video games. <laughs> and really, what's the point of life if not that? <laughs> that's why we're all here, anyway. Um, we also played some video games. Although I will say, due to power outages, storms. Um, avalanches in the Donner Pass and uh, internet breaks and cats dying we might have played a little bit fewer games than maybe we had planned to listen um, we're going to talk about Blood Meridian at some point yes. a little bit so it's not a video game but it's one of the best books ever written um, I did get some Next Fest uh, fun going on as well I want to mention there's actually uh, Jesse put up a fantastic thread on Twitter of some of the Next Fest games he's been enjoying uh, which I definitely uh, think you should Go check out. Um, uh, we will be doing a special video next week on No Clip Crew about some of the games we played on Next Fest. So we're not going to get too into the Next Fest stuff uh, today. Also, I don't think Jeremy's had internet since Next Fest started. <laughs> He's shaking his head. Uh, but before we get into all the games we're pl- going to talk about today, including Persona 3, is it just called Reload? Mm-hmm. I keep okay. calling it Reloaded like the Matrix. It's Matrix. Not Persona I, 3 Reloaded, but they my, should my, call it Reloaded. One, my brain went to the exact same spot, Frank. So we're, <laughs> we're, we're brothers in Christ there for sure. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about Infinite Wealth and Entrouded a bit more because uh, on Jeremy's recommendation, I went and played that. Uh, a little bit of uh, um, uh, Next Fest stuff. And yes, we will talk about Blood Meridian. Why not? <laughs> I added it to the document. Fucking get it in there, bae. Uh, but first of all, amazing shout out to our terrific uh, Battle Pass holders. Almost a terrible. Harry Flanagan, Battle Royale Games, Arno, Richard Matherson, James Brown, Jason Drury, Mark Rojas. Uh, who uh, was up in the Olympic Peninsula. No, he wasn't. Was he? No, he was up on Vancouver, Vancouver Island. Right? Island. Yes, yeah, sorry. North of there. Um, uh, and was wearing no clip merch. And someone at a store uh, said, oh, do you work with no clip? He was like, no, I'm a fan of no clip. And then he like, gave him a sticker or something. Was it something like that? I think he gave him a pin. We don't sell pins. Oh. Did he just have he his own made, pin? Yeah. Did he make a pin? <laughs> yeah. What a diehard! What a yeah! He's up there uh, jeeping. It looks like he's a he's a he's a jeep jeep bro. I'll have to give him the jeep wave if I see him on the road sometime. Um, so thanks for that, Mark. That was rad. Uh, Ryan Cobb, Tucker Morgan, Crimson Cyclist, Sven Hooster, Tim Robinson, Forrest Pruitt, Eric Hamilton, Schneider, Hammerlad, <laughs> Zachary Snader, Alex Sharp. Alex Goucher, George Sakotis, Jacob Godserve, Tohir Teliev, and of course, Ryson. Thank you all so much for your incredible support over at patreon.com slash no clip. We have some cool patron exclusive goodies going up in the next a couple of days. We have a great behind the scenes of our Pentiment shoot that Frank uh, put together. Uh, we're also going to have a post doc, a post mortem on uh, our documentaries, a new show that we're going to put out where we basically answer questions that people have about the docs. Um, bit more insight maybe into how they were produced all that type of stuff we're going to do our first one on the documentary for return to monkey island which came out on the doc channel 
uh, just two days ago, was it? Was it yesterday? No, it was two days ago. Um, was it? I can't remember. Might have been yesterday. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll have that up for patrons exclusively as well. But let's talk about video games. I feel like we should start with the most relevant video game, Blood Mer- No, um, Persona <laughs> 3 <laughs> Reloaded. Um, uh, Neo is back. Um, there's thousands of Agent Smith uh, inside the television. <laughs> I guess Persona and The Matrix aren't that dissimilar now that I think about it. Yeah, they're they're both similar. Where there's the, there's the real world, and then once you learn the truth, you go and you fight the machines. Well, you fight demons. Um, but yeah, so Persona Three Reload. This is so good. It launched on Game Pass, which is crazy. I I didn't think I was gonna pick it up at launch because still playing the giant JRPG Infinite Wealth. I'm also still playing the giant <laughs> RPG Fallout Four. How can I handle more at this point? I don't care. I'm all in. Um, but it launched on Game Pass, and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna not play it. Um. When it comes to Persona, my first Persona I played was Persona 5, which came out in 2016, which, but I didn't actually like beat it or play it till 2018. I tried Persona 4 Golden when it launched on like Steam, like maybe a few years ago. I didn't 100% get into it because it still has the old like PSP chibi art. It's not completely great. Right. It is good, but not. Persona 3 Reload is amazing. So this is a complete like from the ground up remake of this, there's okay there's persona 3 which came out on in 2006 on ps2 and then nice. i think there's called like persona 3 fes which is like the psp version which people say is the better version to play okay. um and now they have basically taken like persona 5's look you know system engine everything and have basically done persona 3 in that so it looks incredible uh the art is no longer that kind of like squash chibi it is like I don't know, everyone's everyone's tall and beautiful and, and and like it looks really good. Persona is so famous for its stylish UI and its music, so it is completely yeah. absorbing. Um, is, is it is it exactly yeah. the same as uh, three back in 06 or this PSP version? So, do you do you have any idea? I guess so. So I never played it, but I, but apparently there is like some extra stuff in it. There's there's more content, more things. There's, it's also fully voice acted for the very first time. Oh, but it that's is the cool. exact same like story characters. I don't know if there's anything new because I'm going in blind. But they kind of did this when um, same thing. Persona Four. They released Persona Four Golden. Added a whole new. You get to do an extra semester of school. Same oh really? Thing. Persona wow. Five Royale, which they took Persona Five and did like a Ultimate Edition. Added extra character. I think extra endings and then an extra another semester. So I'm assuming Persona Three Reload. You have to. I don't know. I'm assuming there's extra content. It's all new to me. The general gist of a Persona game, like the general gist of a Persona game, half of it is like life sim dating sim you you're a student and during the day you can go out on dates with friends you can you can get jobs work around town you're leveling up like social skills it's almost like reading a manga or watching an anime and it's then kind of, it's not that yeah. dissimilar to infinite to like the yeah. yakuza right or yes. sort of like a dragon in particular with the social links and all that sort of stuff like yeah yeah and, and like the you the the deeper you get your social links you unlock more abilities in the combat so you're you're incentivized to keep up your social skills as much uh as as like your jrpg stats and then yeah at night you go into uh they call it like tartarus every every one of these games has a has a word for it or a zone for it but like right. at night people turn into shadows and then it's almost I hate keep using the we've been following all these games similar to Pal World and Pokemon, but you have different personas, which are these like demons, um, and you can fuse the different poke the different personas to get there. <laughs> careful, like careful. Anyway. You can fuse yeah. the different personas together, make stronger personas. All of the personas, the personas, personas. I thought you personas. did too. Um, yeah. <laughs> all the designs are super sick, and it, what I do like is like it's the same the same like persona they're the they're like enemies that types it's kind of like final fantasy or universal through all the games so it's like there's the very famous like atlas mascot jack frost that little like mm. snowman dude um and and so the combat itself is really good it's, nothing has changed what i like about this having played five and four is it's so much it's so easy to play it seems i don't want to say it's simplified but if you know how to play persona i had no problem picking this up and immediately going through it i grinded the entire tutorial dungeon i think in two nights the, it's such a weird mechanic in this game where 
<laughs> two nights Wait, in the I, game I, world, one day, one oh, night in real life. Okay. In, in Persona, you have like you get fatigued the longer you play, so you have to go to bed to recover your mana, basically. Get that rest at XP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but it's become kind of a flex and like like how, how like oh if, funny. With any JRPG, I think the ultimate goal is to beat it as fast as you can without over grinding. It's fun to grind, but that's always the game is like right. To, how, how 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 low level can you be when you beat it? So people. I don't know. Persona fans are always flexing, like how many nights it took him to beat a dungeon. I'm but staying that, up all night to beat this dungeon, <laughs> yeah. in, but in the game. Yeah, in the, yeah, yeah. And yeah. in real life. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the game. The game starts, I think, April 9th. And right now in my game, it's like it May May 8th. And I have already put 12 hours into the game, which I didn't think oh, nice. was possible. But I really do not. I think I grinded one dungeon. I just spent an entire day and I just did a dungeon. And then the Is, other key seller it, yeah i need to know is this the one where they shoot themselves in the head yes, yes. it's so yeah. sick okay. it's, it's awesome. so sick they still have that i was worried Every that they time, would take yes it, when you okay, start good. the game it has like a a caution warning like warning this game contains themes of suicide bullying whatever um but yeah when, when you <laughs> what i'm sorry i'm sorry whatever sorry if you're francois no, robe no. spear this might be triggering to you <laughs> yeah, if you well, shoot yourself in the but head. the theme of Persona is that you shouldn't <laughs> shoot yourself in your head because you, you can make friends who care about it's all you know very okay. anime but you do have to shoot yourself in the head to like yes. get into the nether realm or whatever to, you call it. Was it Tartarus? Yeah. So at night, everyone goes into a coffin. But the, there's students who are part of the specialized execution extracurricular squad. Oh, my that God. That is the name of your unit. They wear red armbands that say S-E-E-S on it, which is like. It looks is a bit Nazi. Yeah. Or they're shooting it? themselves in the head. It's crazy. Wait. So everyone yeah. else in the world goes to sleep in a coffin. Yeah, well, so at night, yeah, everyone, everyone there is a there, that's what we're investing in. There's the dark hour between between night and morning. It's the dark hour, and secret stuff is happening at the school. And what is the root of it? And and but, that's very Matrix. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is like, is your characters like you know parents? Are they going to sleep in a coffin? Oh no! So they they aren't actually. Everyone goes to sleep, but then uh, at once the dark hour happens, everything transforms. It's like Silent oh, Hill. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. But, got but, it. but it's not. We're not living in a vampire world. People are actually. That's what I was wondering. No, it was like okay. it's just a normal Japanese yeah. town, except this one particularly yeah. odd thing that happens. No, but, okay. Yeah, but um, but um, but yeah, it's it's great. The music is so good. It's the the original Persona Three soundtracks on Apple Music. So I already have been listening to it. But yeah, oh, it's um. Persona 3 is incredible. I had never touched it because years ago when I looked into it, I was so confused. Like, do I play the PS2 version? Do I play the PSP version? Mm, yeah. Do I play the port of the PSP version they released on PSN on my PS3? So I was like, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. And then Persona 3 reloads out. Apparently has a million quality of life things that make it easy to play because apparently Persona 3 is very hard otherwise. Okay. Um, so this is great. Easy to play. It's on Game Pass. It's it's on Steam. It's on PlayStation. Uh, if you like Persona 5, jump into this. If you've never played a Persona game, you can play these. Um, it doesn't seem overwhelming. Persona 5 was kind of overwhelming for me mm. at the beginning, but the tips is the tips are like you can't do everything in this game on one playthrough. It encourages new game pluses. It encourages more. You can't max out every social link on your first try. Maybe you can if you look a guide, but that's not fun. Mm. Just play it. Have fun. Take chance. Again, the, it, it teaches you how to live life. Have fun. Take chances. Do things like that. I will say it's very charming playing Persona because every day in the game you get text messages from friends who are like, "Hey, you want to hang out?" And girl, <laughs> girls are asking you out, and I'm like, "Oh, this is." Oh, this is great. This is amazing. So it's, uh, it's, 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 it's great. It's awesome. So uh, very excellent. good. Do you have, I can't, I, so I've played like every persona game. I've mm -hmm. played like five to 10 hours yeah. of mm -hmm. this one. Um, and I, I dabbled in uh, persona three and FES and I can't remember which is which do you have direct party control of all your party members in combat? Yes. In the, in this yes you do. Okay, good. Yeah. Cause I, I think it was FES. Maybe you could only, there was like a tactics management menu, but mm -hmm. you could only control the protagonist in combat. And, uh, I, I think the tactic stuff worked fine, but it was kind of like I didn't like the hands off approach of that. Um, but yeah, I from my memory, I, I like got sick two years ago and laid in bed playing Persona 3 on an emulator. And I was like, <laughs> they're like shooting themselves in the head. What's going on? Like, yeah. it's like these high school kids just like committing suicide. They're like, this is actually cool. It's, it's like so sick. It's, it's so awesome. Sick. It's a fucking great game. <laughs> wild wild stuff uh that's cool i, I wonder are they gonna are, well do you think they'll get around to, <clears throat> to doing four next or yeah, are there so modern I, versions of four you can kind of play already I, i'm assuming they're working on persona six i don't know if they would do persona four from the ground up because that's what they just relaunched um like two years ago they put persona four golden which was a oh they did You're it right. was like it was a it was a it was a souped up port of the ps vita version Oh, wow. Um, and that was like pretty great. And even in Persona 4 Golden, at any point you can press start and change difficulties, XP payouts and all that. So like, I think that's the definitive version. That was the thing I put so many hours on my Steam Deck. 
Mm. Like I never beat it, but I have like 50 hours into it. So it feels wow. like I'm, you know, um, but yeah, I'm assuming they're working on persona six and then Atlas is always just cranking out stuff. Like I really liked when they did Catherine, which was kind of its own puzzle game. Like that was, yeah, cool. that was uh, cool. the, the one thing I'm very excited by is I found out March like 5th. So like uh, the day bef- before I get into Tokyo, there's going to be a persona three pop-up cafe in Tokyo. Nice. Oh, wow. So nice. I mean, I should probably make reservations now. So I don't know, but maybe it's already sold out i don't care i will look at it i'll go there and take pictures i don't care so great timing to be a persona fan i already looked up there's characters in the game I'm like is there figures of this i want i want i want i want so i'm waiting so artist alley cosplays fandoms more i'm all in on per- now i know what persona 3 stuff is right but, but yeah uh, exactly. i i hope they do the persona 5 treatment for persona 2 uh which oh, i've yeah. only played maybe like six hours of persona 2 but i know for a fact that at some point in persona 2 you you kill hitler uh, <laughs> oh, and, yeah, I've heard about this. Yeah. So I, I, I also <laughs> like Persona Two. The art is fantastic. It's it's two D. It's like uh, sprite art, but um, and it looks great. But I would love to see. I don't know. I think like there's a generation of people who got into Persona later who would find it much more accessible if it looked and played like Persona Five and had su- like the quality of life stuff and the punchy UI and stuff. But uh, yeah, what, what I played of Persona Two was very cool and weird and felt different. It looks. It looks. It's three D, but it's bright out, right? It's, uh, is it like? I, it's been a while since I played it. It's it wasn't, very Final I, Fantasy VII looking to me. Yeah, it might have been. Was it pre rendered two D or something? That kind of looks about right. Yeah. 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 It's like. Uh. Yeah. I don't know. Actually. It's hard old to looking. Yeah. It's a it's PlayStation One game. Isn't oh, it? here's Hitler. Here's yeah. It's like um. Here's, here comes art. Hitler. Yeah. I'm typing uh, in Persona oh, wow. Two Hitler. Yeah. Yeah. They uh. As well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a. Wow, he's got a cheesy <laughs> smile. He's he has like aviators on. <laughs> does. If you want answers, you must defeat me. But know this: uh, spear of destiny and the power of Nyharala. Not who the fuck is Nyharala Thep? Is that like some man? You don't. You uh, clearly haven't learned much about World War Two. All right. Two, yeah, I mean, spear of destiny. Look, we've all played Wolfenstein, but yeah. like Nyharala Thep. That sounds like some sort of ancient Egyptian. Oh man, this looks intense. Look at that Hitler face. Maybe I'll put Hitler. I'm probably going to put that Hitler face on the thumbnail this week. So. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not a controversial decision at all. He's doing it right there. I mean, look, we're just talking about people shooting themselves in the head. Don't shoot yourself in the head. Yeah. Yeah. And don't be don't, Hitler. And don't be Hitler. Don't be Hitler. Don't Come do a on, Hitler. Dude. Just don't do Although, it. Although, if you're going to do a Hitler, maybe shoot yourself in the head before you do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really good point. <laughs> Kill Hitler. Great point. All then the you'd be a hero. Th- of all the bad things Hitler did, no one ever talks about the fact that he did kill Hitler. It was the one cool thing he did, other he did. than like doing paintings, maybe. I don't know. I haven't seen his paintings. They're probably Whoa. bad. Whoa. <laughs> Do you like his paintings? I don't know. Did you, was it on this podcast we were talking about? How the fuck did this come? Do you remember the... Was it on this podcast we were talking about the the his the eagle's nest? No, that was when, when we, we were, were hanging out in LA. Yeah, we were... That's who it was, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We looked up. <laughs> that's what my wife texted it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because we were looking at like going on a holiday in Austria and we were looking at all this fun things you can do. And of course, the Eagle's Nest, all of you who've watched Band of Brothers know that Hitler's Eagle's Nest is a, a, a top, a, a sort of a hillside village, a, a mountainside village in Austria. And they went to great pains in the description of the Eagle's Nest to say, like, this is, this was where he relaxed when he wasn't committing genocide this was this has nothing to do with his politics this place this is literally a place that the nazi party bought him as a birthday present but they're like there's nothing about history or politics involved it's just a beautiful place that hitler used to spend his off times <laughs> it's like what it's so fuck? apolitical it's like yeah just come and get a beer have some like wiener schnitzel and just chill there's nothing political about the eagle's nest Absolutely. Just come hang out, you know, don't mention the war. It's it was yeah, I wish I could find the thing now, but it was on it was on their website. The, the yeah, the Eagle's Nest. The Eagle's Nest was like a Twitch stream where like the streamer was just like, yes. let's not like this is a place to leave politics Both behind. Sides, man. We're just yeah, gonna exactly, hang yeah. out here and listen, don't bring your politics into my Nazi den, all right? Everyone has an opinion, and my opinion is that everyone's a little bit wrong, you know? <laughs> uh, and also uh, Hitler didn't think about the things he did when he was here. This this is where he went to get away from the atrocities he was committing. Exactly, dude. It so was just a we, chill place. It was to like blast it was like his. Means. It was like his Minecraft. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mine, no, that was Minecraft. It was M M E I N Minecraft. Minecraft with Fuck, a K. Man, we've really ruined this podcast. Um, 
let's talk about some other video games. I'm going to quickly talk about my two, I guess, because we talked about them both last week. Infinite Wealth is just the best game. It's just really fantastic. Like, I cannot put it down. It, it's so funny. The, 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 the continuing ridiculousness. Like, each mission, when I get into it, each side mission... Like, usually in these games, I'm, like, walking around, then a side mission pops up, and it, like, brings me into a cutscene. I'm like, oh, fuck's sake. I was going to go do something. In this one, it's like, what crazy shit is going to happen now? Like, the guy, there's, like, a dude who's, like, a Japanese tourist who keeps getting, like, rinsed for money by people who are, like, you know, basically scammers on the street. And he's, every time they, they want money, they lift up a little donation box in front of him, and he gives them money. And it's uh, it's like all stuff like that. Like, oh, the parish wants to take a photograph with you and, and things like that. There's the the whole dodging traffic mini game for the the uh, uh, the movie, I guess, that you're doing or that, that that's being filmed there. Um, the, the stuff in the mall, there's like a mall reality TV game show thing that you do. I've been doing the Pokemon stuff. The Pokemon stuff is brutal because some <laughs> people have like level 80 guys and you're like, but then when you beat guys, you get to like, you know, add them to your Fujima, Sujimon, Sujimon. Yeah, Sujimon. Uh, and then you can have them eat cards as well, like eat each other to upgrade them. And there's, it's just, oh, what I love about it is like they've all, I don't know if this was like just like me being culturally ignorant, but like for some reason, when you were doing all this funny shit in like their version of Akihabara or whatever, it kind of just felt like, yeah, because when you're in Akihabara, it feels very like, gamey and weird and fun it's just, it feels like you know like a place that doesn't really exist it's like a you know you come up in the subway and it's like this place is fucking crazy um whereas when it's taking place in hawaii for some reason like a western setting that i've never been to hawaii in my life but it feels even more fun that it's just like oh like this is what life should be like when you run around you're like you know hanging out with your fucking crab pet in the bar that you live in and doing karaoke during the day and then going out and, you know, helping people. Like, there's so much crime in Hawaii in this game. It makes <laughs> no sense. They're like, the main streets are fine, but once you get off the main streets, it's real, like, you know, underground shit. Um, and you're just constantly, like, you know, when, when you're trying to grind in this game, you're just walking around Hawaii in the daytime picking fights for, like, 10 hours. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's so much fun. I've just, I, I, yeah, I absolutely love it. It's just the most silly nonsense. And then also super sincere, like all the friendship stuff and everything is terrific. Um, Frank, have you been playing any more of it? I haven't had, I haven't gone back to it since last week, but I'm very eager. I haven't like even unlocked different jobs or the animal crossing mode inside, but, but yeah, it's, 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 it's really good. Like I was just thinking, it's like in anime, there's always the trope of like the beach episode like it's always like yes. at the like friends the, did it too. Yeah, like after the after the season finale, it's always like the the extra episode on the Blu-ray or the OVA, and this feels like Yakuza's beach episode, where it's like you know we <laughs> nice. just had twelve games in this franchise. They were all and they're all very silly and light, but this is the extra bonus. Let's just have fun, and it, yeah, it is such a breath of fresh air. It's, it, also, just I don't know playing a JRPG where the sun is out, like in Persona, you're doing it at night right. in a in a dungeon and it's ratty. It's cool, but it's still oh man, here the sun is above and. You're beating up people on the beach. Everyone's in bikinis. It's 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 wonder. It's a wonderful sight. It's like homeless people who are dressed in um, sleeping bags that look like worms and move like worms. <laughs> like it's oh. just, oh man, yeah, it's such a good time. It's really fantastic. I hope when Game of the Year comes around that it gets a look in because it's it's genuinely you know, like really terrific. If if you're on the fence, it was a lot of people who watched the quick look we put up on No Clip Crew who were like. This is what pushed me into getting it, and I'm loving it now. Awesome. So that was really cool to read. Um, so yeah, if you're on the fence, folks, you know, especially uh, if you're super super on the fence, you don't think about it. When it comes around on a, on a stay on a sale, um, uh, maybe uh, go for it then. Uh, the other one I played was I haven't played enough of it. I played maybe three hours of Enshrouded. Uh, I stopped because I'm waiting to play with my mates, yeah. but then all the storm stuff happened, so I want to play with them. Yeah, very fascinating, very Valheim, -y, like you said. But obviously, completely authored. Um, graphics are gorgeous. Really interesting stuff with like um, shadow and sunlight and moonlight. Like, there's lots of interesting things there. 
uh, it's it's hard too. Like yeah, the alone. Bodies. Is, you're playing totally solo, right? Yeah, it's very hard those. alone. Um, it, it definitely like I I found that the sweet spot was kind of if you have because I I played with two of my friends from Boston. Um, mm. and when all three of us would go out at the earlier parts of the game, it would almost be like a little bit easy. But we have one buddy who's really into like crafting and building and that side of these kind of games. So like if he was the base mom and then the other two of us would go out <laughs> right. and request, I feel like two people was kind of the sweet spot for a lot of stuff. But, um, but yeah, we, uh, me and my buddies played through, we like juiced the whole game. Like we did all the early access oh, content, wow. uh, finished it. How long did it take? Uh, I have, oh, I can check on steam in a second. It has to boot up, but I think I have like 25 hours. Oh, or wow. Something. Cool. I think you could make it last longer than that. Um, but the I when we when I played Valheim with my buddies, there was like a our 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 pace through that game was like so glacial that I, at some mm. point I felt like I was like, we're never going to see this whole game because everyone's going to get tired because we took like 80 hours to do the first two biomes. <laughs> and I was like, guys, we're, I just want to like see the whole game. So I kind of was like, let's let's go. Let's quest. Let's like go get some stuff. I was kind of like pushing everyone, spurring them right. to go do stuff. But uh, so we, we played it probably faster than than most people do uh but it was it was really fun i enjoyed the whole thing and uh i was i was sad when uh when we finished hit the end yeah, yeah. i was with valheim as well so uh, maybe i'll try to take my time yeah with this one when, once we started getting to like like the area where all the sun cinders were or sunders or whatever where there was just like loads of that shit like i don't want to i don't want to spoil valheim i know it's been a little well hopefully we'll be able to talk to those folks in sweden next month or that's that's the that's the 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 plan anyway um uh i'll talk about my next fest stuff in a second jeremy tell us about the hot new video game everyone's playing <laughs> it's a read your own adventure called blood meridian it's a, it's a choose your own adventure but it's totally linear um <laughs> you're the only choice is when to turn the page yeah i uh oh, it's a walking simulator it's a walking simulator okay. it's kind of like gone home uh so <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I, I also there's something else I want to talk to talk about after this. So I'll keep this <clears throat> kind of brief because I know this, this, is, this a, is a Cormac McCarthy joint, this right? This is a Cormac McCarthy joint. This is uh, some people Great say it Irish is his name. masterpiece. Um, God, this this book is unbelievable. I have read the beginning of this book on a PDF, and I was like, I need to read a hard copy of this book someday. I think Cormac McCarthy, like to give context on why uh, there was Cormac McCarthy, a, a Twitter account popped up for him like seven years ago. And uh, and people reached out to his publicist to see if it was really him. And he was like, Cormac does not own a computer. Um, oh, wow. Like okay. he's like wrote a bunch of his books living in a stone house that he built with no heater running water. Like really super hardcore dude. Just like living hard. Uh, quit drinking at some point. So it was just like sitting out there just raw dog in life in a stone hut with no heat. Wow. Just typing away. Uh, yeah. Blood Meridian is a it is a unbelievably but some people say it's like a horror a horror book and i kind of get that it's definitely more of like a kind of like a great american novel western uh takes place in the 1800s largely in oh, the right. southwest and uh and mexico um and it is just a a brutal brutal read uh it is uh, the i i have a pretty strong stomach especially when it comes to like reading like i you know you could be <laughs> yeah, like and then yeah. he like cut his head off and i'm like okay what well, i can't see it so really like he fucked him up yeah it's like it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> fuck with me because i'm not looking at it even like when yeah. you watch a horror movie you know it's fake but you're still like oh it like tricks your brain mm. the, the his prose is is so unbelievably powerful that when he wants you to feel like moments of transcendence like there were moments in this book that are are like sparsely beautiful that brought me to tears mm. but then when he wants to like fuck you up oh my <laughs> like i have never read something that made me feel so sick before uh oh, really it is it is a and, and uh, that's why i want to preface it because if anyone's like oh that sounds like a nice beach read um this is a <laughs> this is a brutal book but uh it is like it's this like I the reason I wanted to mention on the podcast is that the um I I like when games are quite literary like Disco Elysium I've mentioned a million times is one of my mm. favorite games the last ten years uh and it is quite literary in its tone and that's kind of what I like about it because it feels different in its tone than a lot of games writing which has like not that all games writing is more just like entertainment oriented but a lot of the times when I play like a a big adventure game or something the writing is like hello adventurer like it's kind of like you know it's not cheesy but it's kind of like verges on cheesy or something yeah uh i i i like i don't know i want someone to write a video game that's that's like this that's there that, i mean i've played a few video games I'm, I'm struggling to think of an example that are like more hardcore in tone and like 
definitely try to punish the reader and are just like in, really intense. Like this war of mine is a, a very serious oh, yeah. game. Yeah, and, like, yeah, totally. These kind yeah. of things exist, but they're which definitely. Yeah, which with the whole, which the point of our cart life, I guess as well. Games where like the point almost is losing. Yes. Like, yeah. It's, it's trying. Yeah. It's trying to get you the fail. Um, I, I think it's, it's definitely like a, it's a weird space for games to be in, not because games are inherently fan servicey, but there is like, when you read a book like Blood Meridian and everyone is just like the, o- the only good characters you encounter are like, oh, I'm like a little, I'm just a nice guy. They're like, Hey, why don't you cut his scalp off? And you're like, no, dude, you don't, you don't need to do that. And then they're just like brutal murderers, like roaming the land, making everything horrible. It's yeah. like, if you're playing a video game and you're one of those people, you, you can't really tell that story with a sense of agency unless you want to play that game as a sociopath. Um, yeah, it's. I'd say the only game that I can think of that that even dabbled with this was The Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, I would say where you know, and and whether or not it pulls that off, I think is very you know results may vary. It's 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 funny. I've been thinking about The Last of Us Part Two a lot recently because that documentary came out as well. It's fantastic. Go check it out. Um, Area Five put out Grounded Two. Should be available in the game now as well, but it's also up on YouTube, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, I've been, I've been ruminating on that game a lot, especially with regard to like its wider themes, which I think, I don't think it pulls off. I don't think it ever did for me. I don't know. Or for any, or for a lot of people. I think yeah. the reason people like those games is I think the performances are fantastic. I think the cinematography in those games is excellent. Um, I think the world, kind of like McCarthy in The Road, The Road is such an interesting... Like sometimes when you set your story in an interesting world, you get a lot of mileage out of that. Like The Road is just... Like when the kid, when he finds the Coke can, right? Like obviously that's like a beautiful moment that's written in there. But like there's something about the expectation of the of the reader of The Road of like you can't, you know the world as it was and you can imagine the world as it is now. You can sort of like there's, I don't know, you're like invested in it in some way. And, and I think The Last of Us gets a lot of mileage out of the fact that it is these very vivid, high resolution versions of modern American cities in a post-apocalyptic world. Like I think post-apocalypse is like a very, you get a lot out of it, not for free, but yeah. like you get a lot out of it. And I do think, like, especially in part two, where I think people really did, a lot of people didn't resonate or believe in the protagonist's journey in that. It just seemed like it seemed, uh, oddly enough, like I would love to sit down and talk to Druckmann about it because it it did seem very uh, biblical. Yeah. Like, Like it was a conversation about violence that you do when you're reading scripture where you talk about violence in the abstract. Um, which I also think, and I, God, I'd really love to get it. I also think that there's, there's some, pla- like, I think there's a large amount of that outset in Israel as well. I think people do think about violence in that way because their culture and their country, and certainly with regard to what's going on in with Palestine is, I think there's like a divorcing yourself of responsibility by talking about violence in the abstract. And to me, I think that's, that's where the last of us part two sort of, doesn't resonate with me and i think doesn't resonate with a lot of people i think they really like the characterizations they love the the, the, how it's all put together and they like the characters um and they like the world that it's in but i don't necessarily think those themes uh, come across and and i wonder the reason i'm bringing this up is because when you're talking and i've not read blood meridian but i know no country for old man and i've read the road um i wonder if games it's really if it's really hard in games to do this like i think the last of us part two does a really good job of trying by giving you multiple, you know, you play multiple people in that game by giving you the, I think, I think it succeeds in that, like in lot, I think the grand theme of it doesn't work for me, um, is largely unsuccessful, I think, but I think the, the making you feel empathy for other situations or, or motivations for people, it kind of pulls off. But what you're talking about is not that what you're talking about is like, the win conditions of games are almost like counter to the ability to like really like there's things you can do in literature and in films where the the player is divorced from direct control and responsibility that you can't 
kind of do in games or as yeah. hard as to do in games. Yeah, experiencing it as like an omniscient eye in the room as these things happen feels very different than having agency in it. And in order to give the player agency in a in a like say there was like a Blood Meridian video game and they're like, all right, the, the kid walks up and he's going to like kill this guy. You're like, well, I'm the kid and like I don't want to kill this guy. Right. And then it's like, what are they going to make a two different video games? And in one, you're like the bloodthirsty cowboy roaming the land, killing people. And in the other, you're like, uh, I'm going to I grow beans instead. And like I meet a nice lady and we like have a little home. Like it's two it's two totally different games. Like you can't you can't create an experience with that like wide a spectrum of experience because it just you can't, it's two different. You have to have, to have two different studios two different make games. those games and then be like, all right, now like merge them together. And a player gets to like choose where they diverge on at some point. But then it's like that's not a that doesn't feel like a video game. It's like. Do, do just choose which game you want to play uh yeah and i and i know you've not you've not played last of us part two right i have played a, a bunch of it yeah and oh, I, you have, okay yeah and i've edited it enough videos of it now that i know the whole story that's true yeah that's true um and i think that a lot of the like you know uh and i'm not going to spoil anything but a lot of the the reasons why people got particularly i think angry about that game uh, and how it sort of ends is that they i think they wanted to stop the protagonist yeah they would just, and they, and in those moments like that like you're saying like in when you're reading a book you don't get you're along for the ride it's a fucking roller coaster you're along through hell or high water you were there and like the road feels like i've not read blood meridian the road feels like a scary story to be part of you're like where the fuck is this gonna go yeah. and so does cormac so does um no country for all men and it does feel that way in the last of us but because you have the control over the character it feels worse because it's because, you because it's you doing it and and because you have so much agency over what the character does a lot of the time except when it really fucking mattered yeah like except when it's the thing you actually care about and you have you're strapped in for those parts and i've and i get maybe something else i'm not a de- 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 developer designer i don't i don't know but maybe there's something else you get from that maybe by putting the player through that you drum up something in them but i think you also maybe drum up a lot of like dissatisfaction and yeah. a lot of frustration that is not connected to the core theme of what you're going for like like it's a different it's like a it's like a logistical problem with storytelling in games yeah it's like the, there was this was a, this is a bit of a trite phrase because it was overused for a while but like ludo narrative dissonance is a oh yeah is a very real right. thing because in in literature when you feel that friction it's because you're watching it happen you're like oh this is like hard to watch but i understand how it's teaching me about the human condition but when it's you when you're the person doing it you're like well i I wouldn't do this. Like I, I don't yeah. understand why. Like most of the time, I can choose which which shelf in the convenience store to hide behind as I'm shooting guys, <laughs> and I get to choose whether I shoot them in the foot or the head. But then when it matters, it's like, oh no, I don't. I like stay in this town. I like want to be. Ha- I don't want to like go kill people. Like the it feels like the larger decisions because you don't have any agency over them. It's like there's a there's a a ver- like a swinging back and forth between like. Oh, you have agency over the micro, but the macro, you're on this journey and you don't get to choose anything. And it's like, it's whiplash, I guess, is the word I'm looking for between yeah. agency and lack of agency. Yeah, for sure. It's And I, I get it from a production standpoint, it would be impossible to make a game yeah. where, and like, and also you're telling a story. Like, and I think it, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't, I don't know if anyone is really effectively I guess Baldur's Gate is maybe an argument in favor of this, where they, they, and that's a different type of game, obviously, but like, I, I, you know, obviously those games are very cinematic and they're trying to impart a very particular story. And like that first game is, is wonderful. I think the ending of the first game is really spectacular. Um, of the last of us know, one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like I, like I, yeah. Well, I, and I, again, I know it's been like fucking whatever, twelve years probably, but <laughs> yeah, I still yeah. don't want to spoil it. But like, I think that that does a really good job of like taking the like that's that's a moment where the agency of the protagonist feels earned. It's like so they, justified, yeah. It's it's it it yeah. I I did not. I felt like I was partially in control of that protagonist. Like, yeah, it felt like I was. Yeah, it was it was their life and their, their decision, and it was justified. Yeah, exactly. Even if I didn't necessarily agree with it, it was, oh yeah, of course. Whereas, I don't know. I think in in 
yeah or maybe yeah, i don't know it's hard it's really it's really difficult and there's a obviously a degree of subjectivity because you're you're bringing your own like why would you do this into 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 it but yeah yeah hey, look here we are talking about it talking about blood meridian he died last year didn't he uh yeah he did die McCarthy. i think it was last year very recently uh yeah. rest in peace to a legend uh i definitely want to read more of his i've read uh no country and i've read the road but uh this is i feel like blood meridian opened my eyes to kind of like the grand i don't know the road is like a book i read in high school and was like yeah. oh this is like this is pretty wild stuff but blood meridian <laughs> is like it fe- it's like melville or like like it feels like it's it's a grander work that uh right i don't know it, it it's it's touching me in a way that i have not been touched by a book in a very long time so it's yeah the i can't remember how long the road is but it felt like a novella like yeah, it, it's it short. didn't feel very yeah it, it it's a small story and oh it's not that short 287 pages it says on google yeah blood meridian is like 360 okay. i think or something so a little bit longer okay but, um it feel it's just the pace of it is like I just feel like I'm crawling through the desert, like sucking water out of a cactus. And I'm like, I don't want it to end, but I'm like, I need it to be over. Did you see the movie version of The Road? No, I've never seen it. It's actually very good. And it actually, I think this is a case for this and the uh, the, the Watchmen movie. The Watchmen movie does a really good job of changing the ending because they obviously couldn't keep any of the other, you know, pirate comic book shit in it to, to explain what the fuck <laughs> happened um, at the end. But um they just say it was Manhattan that did it all, basically. Um, but in uh, in the road, do you remember the end of the? I don't. Okay, we're not spoiling the end of the road. The end of the road feels very like this is what happened next. The end of the movie is way more ambiguous oh, really? over whether or not you think the the character at the end made the right decision. It's very like. Yeah, it's it's so because I, I I'd read the book before I watched the movie, and then I watched the movie, and I was like, oh yeah, and then that happens, and then uh, it like it's the person he meets is very. I'm not sure if I tr- it's played so well, and you're like, I don't know if I trust what they're saying at all, and it feels it feels great, I think, because it's like there's a I don't know in the book for some reason I felt like maybe everything will be okay. And at the end of the movie, I was like, I fucking have no idea if everything's going to be okay. And everything about this world has made me think that it will not be okay. Um, yeah, I, I got to go back and watch that movie. I haven't watched it since it came out. I'll, I I would love to watch it. I uh, I might have checked that out this weekend. Yeah, I don't think it's very, I don't think it's very long. Oh, nice. It's Viggo, <laughs> isn't it? Viggo Mortensen? It's I, Viggo Mortensen. Okay, cool. It is. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And uh, I forget who plays the kid um, in that one. If he, if he He's probably like some famous actor now he blew up the um, kid, uh, cody smith mcphee mm, oh yes i have seen this person yeah yeah he was in a bunch of stuff okay yeah he was in he was in the american version of let the right one in oh all let right. me in i think it was called he was in a bunch of stuff like that it's very interesting um uh, face very good actor's face uh that was blood meridian pick it up on steam <laughs> Uh, it's part of next as a really list. good co-op mode uh <laughs> betray your friends cut their scalps off you know it's chill stuff uh i played some next fest stuff i'm not going to get too much into it i don't want to throw out a couple of quick wrecks for folks next fest of course is when steam puts up demos of get or rather developers on steam put up demos we put one up for stunt derby uh last summer that demo never came down by the way you can still pick it up if you want we're going to take it down pretty soon though because there are some hardcore updates coming to stunt derby soon as we uh as we we're actually putting out a video in the next week or two about our year-long struggles to get publishers that should be pretty funny um a couple of ones I want to mention. Pacific Drive is there, uh, which is the game set in the Olympic Peninsula. Very sort of sci-fi driving game. Uh, very cool. I played it and we did a video about it up at PAX West last year. The demo, uh, at least the large, the opening part of it is the start of the game, I'm pretty sure. Like the whole thing. Um, uh it's a good demo. Uh, it's broader than what we played at PAX West, which is pretty cool. Uh, Stormgate is also up, which is that um, non-StarCraft StarCraft game that Frost Giant are working on. I think they did a pretty successful Kickstarter recently as well. Um, I kept seeing... We were in LA filming when I was reading about it. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Yes, they did... Um, oh, no, it was back in December they did it. They, uh, they wanted $100,000, which is a laughable amount, I think, for a studio that's trying to put out this game. They did not need $100,000. I think that's the Kickstarter tactic. Uh, they got $2.3 million. Oh, wow. 
from 28,000 backers. Uh, this is a bunch of uh, StarCraft 2 and WarCraft 3 developers, a new real-time strategy. Um, hyper, this is from their Kickstarter. Hypersensitive, a hyper-responsive gameplay, a powerful editor, co-op campaign, 1v1, and more. Uh, the demo is up at the moment. It is an online demo, mostly. You can set up a campaign and play against bots, which is what I did very briefly uh, before the podcast started today. So if you're a fan of RTS, it, to me it feels like a... I don't know, I haven't played enough of it maybe to make a make a judgment on it. It feels like... Like StarCraft 2 in terms of it's, this is robots and stuff, but like kind of more Warcraft 3 in its, I don't know, like the graphics are a lot more World of Warcraft cutesy than they are dirty, technical looking StarCraft, like realistic, like they're, it's way more, like the splash screen looks like over like Overwatch characters kind of, um, and the graphics are a little bit, like I would say you know, rounder and things like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, gameplay is all that matters really in these things and I haven't played enough of it to, to let you know, but it's, it feels like every real-time strategy game it feels very close to a, like a real-time strategy game. I would say that. Um, I played uh, Synergy. So here's the thing. There's two other games I played that I'm going to mention. One's called Ultras and one's called Synergy. And I'm just going to say the Mobius looking video game has expanded past Sable. Uh, Synergy is Mobius Age of Empires. So it's basically a uh, uh like the, the French artist Mobius. If you've if you type that into Google, you will know exactly what we're talking about. Um it is a uh, isometric city building uh in a sort of uh in a very alien world where like the water is poisonous, so you have to like treat all the water. It's a very treat all the water for this and this and this. It's like it's a bit more it's very like, uh, you know, it has the depth of a sort of regular, you know, strategy city builder game, but everything in the world is different. It's everything is like, it does not work like Earth. It is a sort of a different culture. The uh, the buildings look very alien and interesting. It's uh, hyper vibrant. The UI looks like, I don't even know how to explain it, like future alien, but very like colorful and like just delicious. Absolutely love it. Um, so it looks like yeah, like Sable, the 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 game that came out last year. Are you looking at screenshots over there? I can yeah, see yeah, like, yeah. It's uh, what do you make it's of it? Gorgeous. Um, yeah, I uh, it's it's funny that like Jean Girard uh, Mobius has such a distinct style. Uh, but it's it it is funny to see it pop up in games because it's like people who have tried to emulate him clearly have a real reverence for his work because not only are they wearing the influence on their sleeves, but like. They're, they're doing original work in the style of Mobius that feels very true to his style. Like, I feel like if Mobius saw this game, he'd be like, oh, yeah, nice job. You, like, kind of nailed it. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's all. I, I, the other thing as well is, I guess, like, the art, the art look of Mobius is one thing, but also Mobius's art is very, like, um, it is sort of, what would you call it? I don't know what you'd call it, but it is, like, you know, future Bedouinism or something. Yeah. You know, it's, like, it's deserts and it's people with, you know, it's as much metal as it is silk. You know, it's, like, a, it has a very particular, like, sort of North African uh, influence to it. You know what I mean? In terms of the culture. And I think this, Sable as well, but what this game feels quite close to that in a sort of but, but its own thing like it's not i think it's less like vibrant you know it's a bit more uh, saturated than that stuff but yeah i've been enjoying it it's um i don't know what the tale is like on it but it's been it's been pretty cool and the other one i want to mention was a game called ultros dude i was psyched about this game is it good oh so i've been really enjoying it um it's again it's a it's a metroidvania they call it a psychedelic metroidvania which i think is fantastic way of putting it uh, again it's not necessarily i don't know which artist it is we had this with another game re- last year where there was a game that looked like this or maybe did you talk about this last year about ultros um yeah. i i feel like i've mentioned it on the podcast i can't i've never played like a demo of it or anything so I'm, i can't remember the context i would have mentioned it in it's it's a metroidvania in the same way that i just said that uh synergy takes place in a it, it's like oh it's age of empire style gameplay but like everything's fucking different this is very it feels very similar where it's like oh it looks like it's a metro of any game but like the art style is insanely neon vivid beautiful um it has a it's like what was that game we played the first person game where you were a hitman and it was like it was insanely neon and colorful neon white? 
that it? No, okay. this was like an independent game. For some reason, Lethal Company Cup's coming on my head, but it's not that, but it has a silly name like that. I'm not People sure. People are screaming at their podcast right now. I know. Like super lo-fi first-person shooter, very blocky, like the fucking UI was insane. You're not talking you about were... super hot when you say super low poly, no. right? Okay. No. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I'll have to look it up. But anyway, oh, the neon... Oh, oh, uh, 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 I know what you're talking about now. Fuck, yeah. what is it called? Uh, Cruelty Squad. Cruelty Squad, oh, thank yeah, you, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. It has a Cruelty Squad kind of vibe to it a little bit with the UI and it, like kind of existence a little bit, yeah, yeah. like weirdness like that. Um, yeah, I've I've only played maybe 25 minutes of it and I've, I, I found it very interesting and weird and creepy and... and gooey and the animation is cool uh but yeah ultras it's uh also there's a demo for that apparently it's coming out in uh not too long like um i think f- is it four days it's actually out i think it is yeah, oh, yeah cool. february 13th That's it awesome. says so and uh, go pick up the demo now and ultras will be out not too long so that was pacific drive stormgate uh ultras and synergy were the four games that i played uh, was there anything else anyone's played before we jump over to the emails? Anything worth mentioning? I, I probably put like another 20 hours in the Fallout 4. Oh, it's, cool. It, I, 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 it's so good. I think I'm getting close to the end of the base game, but then all the DLC was on sale for $10. So I'm very excited to try Nuka World, which I've heard about for nice. years. So whenever I get to it. But uh, yeah, Fallout 4 has been like, it's always very funny playing a game that's out of the zeitgeist. It's like no one's talking about it, but it's like this is this is great. <laughs> it's but great it's, game. It's making me want to come around to trying Starfield again because I feel like for me the leap from like I don't know maybe New Vegas to Starfield. Vegas I know Starfield. I know New Vegas is yeah. not literally Bethesda, but like that's what I was used to. Fallout. I see how they squashed a lot, and I'm like, okay. It's so funny because like in Fallout Four, I finally got to the Institute, and everything in the Institute looks like Starfield. It's very like sleek <laughs> yes, sci-fi. Yes, one hundred percent. Oh, yeah. I could see. I see it now, and now yeah. I kind of want to go back to Starfield. So, I don't know, months from now, I'll, I'll have a Starfield update. But I don't know, I'm kind of like, I'm the so Institute. in the zone for, Beth- for Bethesda stuff now. And I'm like, yeah, this is, I don't know what it is. It's like, it's it, it's like comfort food. It's like, it still feels like I'm playing a 360 game. Whatever that definition to me means. It's like, like, I, like yeah. last night I was like, man, I'm a, it's, oh, it's like 3 a.m. and I'm playing Fallout. Like high school Frank would be so jealous. <laughs> and it's like, I'm doing it. Dude, so, you know, you know what you got to play next? It's not Starfield. You know what you got to play next? What? 76. I was going to say 76. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try it. I'm psyched to play that, too. I uh, I picked up Fallout 4 and 76 on, on Steam recently. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, so I uh, I definitely will check them both out. I want to check out Fallout 4 because I'm from Boston. Yes, I want you to check yeah. out Fallout 4 so bad. Yeah. I want to have... So, yeah. It was like six That's bucks, what... so I couldn't resist it anymore. That was another oh, wow. like incentive why I played because my dad was from Boston. It took me to Boston a lot. Right. My dad was so, from Boston? Like, That's so cool. He's from Boston. I did not yeah. know that. So I have like, vac- like what do you go, vacation videos of me in Boston at like eight years old. No my way. dad's like, Frank, do you know in where you are? Yeah. No yeah, way. He's like, Frank, do you know where you are? And I'm like, Nathaniel Hall or whatever it's called. Like, <laughs> oh, Faneuil Hall? <laughs> Faneuil Hall. Yeah, oh, that's yeah just awesome. stuff like that. But it's cute because in, in Fallout, you walk around and it's like this. And it's like, oh, I remember my dad telling me about this. And it's like, it's, 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 it's cute. It's good. But uh, it's, uh, it's charming. Yeah. That's really nice. They do a good job of it feels very like i i don't i've been to boston a few times mostly for pax east but of all the fallouts it feels like we talked about how emil pagliarello the lead writer over there is a huge boston guy and like it feels you spend a lot of time in the city of mm-hmm. boston and like a lot of the missions are about you know we talked about the salem uh the salem museum uh mission that's in it he mentioned the institute that's mit yeah you know what i mean yeah. like it's all that sort <laughs> they of call stuff it like cit in that or yeah, something. That's yeah. Great. that's great it's diamond city of course is fenway like there's all the great there's so much great stuff in that game i think yeah that'd be fun for you to play uh, and 76 i just think because of co-op you guys both love I'm down, playing co-op yeah stuff yeah, yeah, too, yeah. Right? that'd be fun um emil pagli rulo i when we when i told him i was from boston he was like, he like t- gave me like the 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 skill check. He was like, you know what a packy is, which is like, it's a liquor store. It's like a package store, uh, but it's like a oh, very really? specifically Boston thing. And uh, I, can't, I can't remember check. who it was him or someone else. If there's anyone listening, this is this is a reference for like two people. If you're from the Boston area, but it was him or someone at another studio. I mentioned uh, Building Nineteen, which is like this bizarre store that used to exist or may still exist in some places, where like they exclusively sell shit that like fell off a truck somewhere and oh my God. and like slid off the highway <laughs> and then like some third party company was like yeah we got a bunch of junk that like fell in a ditch uh and they just sell like junk so if you ever meet someone from the, the greater boston area i mentioned building 19 and see if they're building 19 up. holy shit it's a, what, what are they what's it called the person you sell stolen goods to oh like a, a fence 
yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, it's like an wall. above board yeah. fence. That's like <laughs> almost exactly what it is. Oh man! Uh, all right, some great games there, and it seems like we have some great emails here, Frank. Yeah, we have we have two emails, and if anyone ever wants to email us, podcast at noclip dot video, or if you're in our Patreon Discord, you can message us in our podcast chat. Um, this is from Tiernan asks, "Well, gents, how is yous getting here?" Probably more a Frank directed <laughs> question, fellow achievement obsessed with here. But do y'all enjoy slash see the merit in games having collectathons and games? As an example, I'm currently doing the GTA 4 collectathon of killing pigeons, and while it's beyond infuriating, I feel like it lets the players see and experience more of the world they might have missed during story mode, etc. Looking forward to y'all's take, Slan. Slan, Slan Awalia. It's goodbye in Irish. <laughs> um, I think I mentioned the pigeons last week, didn't I? I think we, so. Yeah, it came maybe. up last week. Yeah. Oh yeah, the pigeons. Pigeons one's hard. It's hard to do without a guide. It's like you, you spend a lot of time just like walking around with the camera yeah. pointed up. Uh, I feel like you've probably done some of this collectathon stuff, Frank, yeah. have you? Yeah, I mean, I even just did it with Fallout 4. Like one of the first things I did was like look up where all the bobbleheads were. But it was oh, like... Oh yeah, 100%. So my, my thing with, with collectathons, I feel like every time I beat a game, I'll look at the achievement list or trophy guide and it's like, do, do I still really want to play the game? It's always a nice incentive. And usually halfway through, I'll be like, all right, I'm done. Or you you go all in. Um, so I think it's, I always like it when it's just an extra excuse to play a game, but if once, as soon as it hits tedious or you get over it, I jump onto the next thing. Mm. But, um, definitely during the day of three sixties where like, you know, like I wasn't buying as many games and have a big backlog. It was like, yeah, great. I'll play dead rising another month just to, I don't know, kill every zombie or whatever. So I, I do appreciate it. Maybe less so now, but if it's a cool game, I'm, I'm definitely all in. Yeah. It's hard when there's so many great games coming out. The last one I feel like I really did this with was both uh, Horizon games. I really liked spending time in that world. And they had a bunch of collecting missions that were not connected really to progression in any meaningful way. Um, uh, I, there was a similar one in Zelda. Remember the Zelda that had the whole where was this photograph taken kind of oh, thing? Yeah, yeah. There was There was one of those in Horizon as well that I really liked. And maybe you got a bit of XP out of it, but I, I don't think you got much else. And then there was a couple of other things you would collect, like um, there was these little figurines you could get, um, and there was something else. I guess the... I guess that's more of a gameplay progression thing, but getting on top of the tall necks was a big one as well, um, doing all that. But definitely the photographs in Horizon, because I just loved... Oh, God, that game was just beautiful for just exploring and wandering like the way they do nature in that game and the way they do like transitioning into buy like it felt like a road trip that game feels more like a road trip to me than any other thing anything else you're going from the tundra to the forest to the high desert to you know cities it's just they do such a fantastic job in both those games of making all those making it feel like a distance like it feels far you're walking and you're climbing and the sun is setting and rising and it feels like you're doing it so yeah i definitely did a lot of like optional collecty shit in both those games because i just didn't want them to end i was just i wanted to be in that world a bit more um i'm not super into collectathons but something that i really like that's kind of adjacent is um in the or before they overhauled star wars galaxies in the original version where it was totally mm. impossible to become a jedi they, yeah. they had a bunch of uh hidden there's a really uh i think it's ralph coster i think is his name if you google like star wars galaxies the original pre-update thing you'll find an article about this i'll post it for the description um but they had a bunch of hidden objectives that they were checking if the player did certain things, but the game was not telegraphing it. It didn't tell you that you could do it. And when you did oh, it, cool. it did not acknowledge it. But it was basically, they were like, the person who becomes a Jedi in this game should be like adventurous. They should be like brave. They should be like all of these different things. And then they had checks to see like, have they been to the highest point and on like six different planets? Have they like done this? Have they done this? And I I think that that's like a really elegant way to pull that off is instead of having the the like little like Xbox 360 thing pop up that's like you got 20 <laughs> yeah. gamer score. I like when a game is is keeping track under the hood of things like that, and then someone in a town somewhere will be like, you seem really like well traveled or like I I yeah. like subtle nods that the game is like like reactivity in that way. Um. But they're, they're, my particular just taste is that when the game is like, like I, when I was playing Alan Wake 2, there was like a really serious moment. And then I was playing it on Epic Games because it was on sale. And I got like a little like bloop, bloop, bloop. And it was like, oh, yeah, dude, it just 100%. like it ripped yeah. me out of the moment. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's like, I, I totally see the appeal. But sometimes it just like tears my immersion in half. Totally. Or it like signals that it's the end of a chapter before you realized it was the end of a <laughs> yeah, chapter. Yeah. I get that a lot. Exactly. Yeah. Um, 
Not our email, Frank? Yes. Uh, Tommy says, hey, no clip. Love the podcast. Don't ever stop. With Frank going to Japan soon, I was wondering if there's any retro games that you're looking to pick up while there. And if not, what are games on your guys list to collect in general? I used to live in Japan and retro games are so much more Ooh. cheaper there in Ameri- than in America. The only downside being that you need to know at least a little Japanese. I highly recommend looking for game stores outside of Akihabara because they hike up the prices substantially there. Book Off generally has a great selection and there's no plenty way. of local stores no. anywhere you go. Is there book offs in Japan? That's where they're from. Yes, there's okay. so many. I'm, I'm going to go to all the book offs. I'm going to all the oh book my offs. I can't wait. Um, it's going to bring an extra fucking empty suitcase we're gonna buy, over, we're, just we're full gonna, of foam. We're going to buy one while we're there and then, and then <laughs> have it awesome. back. Um, specifically, we talked about this on the podcast, but or I think off air. I want to find that Godzilla game in America. Yes. People are selling it for like $300. Um, and so, I mean, right now it's Godzilla Mania because of minus one. But if I can find a copy, I also think... I might I might be wrong, but I think I don't know if PS5 is region free. I know PS3 is region free, but maybe I just buy a Japanese copy or, or a Euro copy of it. I don't know. Um, but um, there's an initial D game for PS3, Ooh. like, and so I, I started watching the initial D anime. That would be cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I I kind of don't collect retro games anymore because emulation has made it so easy. Yeah. Um, but um, I that, do. That's the same yeah. thing with me, where like I I I didn't like I have. I, I had some Japanese consoles growing up, but I mostly grew up with a Commodore Amiga um, and then PC games were predominantly like PlayStation was probably the one that I collect the most stuff on that would be from Japan. Um, but there's plenty of them in U- Europe. So I collect a lot of PC boxes. You know what I mean? And I just, I love having an excuse to buy them so that we can just get Jeremy to film B-roll and then I get <laughs> to have the box forever, which is pretty cool. So I'm like surrounded by them right here. But like, these are all available on steam like pretty much all of them yeah. are available on steam um i have one here that's not that is actually an episode of guilty treasures that's going to come up that is impossible to find at the moment <laughs> just absolutely kidding me um so i might have to use that disc but yeah that's the thing i i run into is i love collecting big box pc big boxes but yeah it's kind of you know mostly there you need to play the down the online version to actually get it to run on a modern os anyway yeah uh jeremy is there any retro games or anything you're collecting or i'm not a big collector i'm like yeah. a i'm pretty big on like emulation i've got my retroid and like yeah i don't know nice. i i like i'm so bad at organizing that if i had any more possessions they would just be in like piles <laughs> on my shelves like i'm I'm looking over here because my shelf is i'm not gonna point my webcam over here because it's embarrassing but it's like <laughs> i have like treasures from from various like i have something from like transistor i've got like a little warframe statue and they're just like they're just like surrounded by clutter. There's just like there's lens caps <laughs> and like tarot cards and markers up there and like old postcards that are that's just what, in a pile. That's why I like the game boxes because they're like they're e- they're relatively mm-hmm. even. Like I have I just have a huge pile of them here. I don't have them in any order, so I just pulled out three that were together. So we have wow. Nerf Arena Blast, <laughs> that's which my is a favorite good one. Cover. Uh, we have H Bomber Guy's favorite game uh, right here. This is uh, you probably notice it more if we open. Oh it up, yeah, maybe. Uh, messiah which he did the oof video all about um which is what that is where the original oof is from tali talarico tali talarico made that game on his own and then pharaoh oh, i love pharaoh dude yeah that's a my wife loves this game i love the ones that open up yeah look at that look at that shit look at that, that shit. is beautiful this is heavy too so you know it's got a big manual in it let's see how big the manual is this is stuff i tell I you all the different out. gods that you can pledge fealty to yeah in like fucking 18 different languages yeah true Especially in Europe, where you had to have the whole, all of them in there. Oh, look at that for a fucking manual. Oh, that's a thick boy. Wow. Okay, that's a big chunker. Oh my God, is it all in English? It has the entirety of Blood it's Meridian. All in, in English. <laughs> it's got a Cormac McCarthy novel in, incorporated. At, right? This is fucking, how many pages? It doesn't, it doesn't have page numbers. Oh, it does. 200, 300 pages, 270 pages. Almost as long as the road. Wow. Look at that shit. Yeah, you're right. Almost as long as the road. Pharaoh, man. There you go. Thanks, Sierra. Unbelievable. Um, there you go. Yeah. Collecting collecting stuff is cool. Once one, you're able to. The one thing I do collect now is figures. Cause yeah, with a lot of games, oh, it would yeah. just sit on my shelf and I'm like, I don't I don't know. But having a figure of something is really nice. Um, so yeah, I, I'm excited to see. Uh, again, like I feel like there's gonna be so much in Japan that I will I will <laughs> be happy to get. Like Tekken is really hot right now. And um tech there's a lot of like Tekken three era action figures i have a Zhao you of that but i'm like oh i wonder if i can find oh, like cool. the nina williams from back then or anything like that but i, I kind of like the way like 
the kind of like cheap plastic figures look from the 90s like they're they're they always sell very cheap too but like i, I kind of like how they look they look that, a little dopey yeah. um like seeing original pokemon toys they look so funny but like those are actually really cool dude Matt, uh, sorry i was just gonna say i have like a bunch of Mega Man figurines from when i was yeah. a really small child and i was th- i was literally thinking like six days ago that i need to tell my parents to ship them out here because they're like oh, yeah. i was like i don't know why i had like a proto man figure that i used to like bring to the grocery store with me like i was just obsessed with proto <laughs> He's not even the hero of Mega Man. He's like the anti-hero. Just look cool. He, did, he had a cape. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's, that'll do it. Do you remember when we were in uh, Tokyo, we we wandered into like this Godzilla exhibit or Godzilla store? Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. It was fucking insane. I was looking through my pictures because I was trying to find, I was trying to show my um my daughter the owl cafe pictures we of the like, girls outside with the owls on the street, which is pretty cool. Um. And I came across, there was one that was just like, it was a huge diorama of like Godzilla. And in both of his hands, he had like, like basically the split apart, like train carriages of a sub. Oh yeah. I forgot about Do you that. Remember? Yeah, yeah, of course. It was big it was as well. Huge. It was like, maybe like Godzilla was like maybe a foot and a half tall. And then he was holding these fucking trains and then it had like just explosions around it. Like, like, you know, paused in time explosions. It was unbelievable. I had a photograph of it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I totally cool. You should send that to me because uh, yeah. Chelsea is obsessed with Godzilla. So I will pass that along. It, uh, yeah, I, w- I was like, oh, man, this is like, if you were a Godzilla fan, because we, it was like, it was some bookshop that had like eight stories, wasn't it? And we wandered yeah. into, we couldn't tell what side was the shop and what side was the mall. And then we wandered into this room and it was just Godzilla shit everywhere. And I, I think it was a, I think it was a, museum thing but maybe it was there all the time my one of my favorite funny memories is when we went into like a like a you know media store they had like the manga floor and the video game floor and stuff and we were like oh there's like the hentai floor we walked up there for a second thinking it'd be like kind of funny and then it was just a bunch of like yeah. salary men looking at like pornography for purchase and we were like this is like way way more normal and less like uh, funny than like <laughs> this is just i now we're just standing in a porn store oh i found the godzilla thing i'm gonna put it up to the camera here so the youtube audience oh, nice. can, yeah. can see it um here it is this was in uh it says the the, the apple has saved the it was kyodaku sotokanda i'm not sure if that's the name of the shop or the area or whatever and uh, if i can get it to this stupid fucking camera if we can get it to get in there it's fucking the iso on this camera i swear to god do not buy the elgato face cam <laughs> it is fucking expensive anti-endorsement it cannot yeah I, I guess it's fine but it cannot deal with fucking with exposure, man. Here, I'll just do this and see if that see if that works better. Oh yeah, that looks good. Wow, yeah. Yeah, it's just blowing up. Look at and those shit. trains. Look at that stuff. Look at those trains. Look at those poor people. Those poor innocent people. Um. All right, that's a podcast, folks. Thanks for all for hanging out. Um. A lot of stuff going on. Our ninety minute return to Monkey Island documentary is available to watch right now. Thank you for all of the very uh, kind messages and pleasant reviews of it. And we're very happy uh, to have it out there. Sorry, it took a little bit long, but we had to make sure that everyone at, uh, at the mouse was happy as well. <laughs> um, uh, I think they were mostly happy at the end. Mostly, mostly. Um, uh, not that we changed anything, but <laughs> it's, we just massaged it. I was just, you know, got to make sure, got to make sure everyone's feeling chill uh, when we get to do stuff. Um, so that's out there at the moment. A bunch of uh, extra information and art uh, on that game that people wouldn't have known about. And uh, some fantastic interviews with some really lovely people. Got some great uh, messages as well. I got um, a nice email from Dave Grossman. A couple of the rest of them saying um, they watched it and they really enjoyed it. So it was quite pleasant. Uh, our documentary on Pentiment is being worked on. It's uh, had a three-day delay because of the power <laughs> outages, but uh, Jeremy's working away on it. Um, we're going to have a behind-the-scenes for patrons on that in the next couple of days, or maybe probably tomorrow. It's basically ready. Frank sent it over. Uh, we'll have a post-mortem on Monkey Island. We'll get that up at some stage next week. We'll probably record it, Jeremy. Yep. Um, we have a video about Stunt Derby and... Uh, the trickiness of publishers, which I'm aiming to get out next week as well, but I'm actually going to Dice in Las Vegas for the week. Um, so if you're going to Dice, if you listen to the podcast, uh, let me know. Hit me up on the Discord or or hit me a twi- tweet. Hit me a tweet. Hit me an X. I don't know what the fuck. Um, X me up. X going to give it to you. X Pac, Degeneration X. You know all the good stuff. BMX Triple X. Uh, maybe it was good branding in the end after all. Who knows? With all those fine intellectual properties. Um. Hell divers, we might have something on that next week. We just got some codes for it, and we'll see about that. 
Uh, we'll have our next fest video as well. I'm working on an episode of Guilty Treasures, which is a show I did over at Giant Bomb for a while. They very graciously allowed me to do it over on No Clip Crew. Uh, the first episode is with Will Smith. Not that Will Smith who smacked that guy on the stage. Not that guy. Uh, the other Will Smith from Tested and from uh, Will and Brad's Tech Pod and from all those good stuff. He was recently at Stray Bombay as well, working with Chet Falasek. Um, Guilty Treasures is a show where I get people to tell me about a game that they really like that is kind of obscure and people don't really give it enough love. And he picked a fucking great one. Uh, a game from the 90s that was on my list of games that I avoided for some reason that I've always wanted to, to dive into. And it's also a game that is not available anywhere digitally because it's stuck in one of those really annoying um, publisher who owns the rights battles things that sort of games like No One Lives Forever and stuff like that. It's not Nolf, but it's a different game. Uh, and also we'll be recording Super Mario Oddities, the show that Jeremy's been putting together about uh, showing us all of the weird Mario videos that he's been collecting over the, the years. The show that God doesn't want us to make because weather keeps exactly. happening, but we're going to do it. Twice we've had exactly. to cancel it because yeah. of weather. And this is just so. a little tease, but uh, we may have may have ordered something very stupid from Eastern Europe to uh, to accentuate oh, yeah. the uh, the appeal of the... I, I won't say any more than that, but just expect a very stupid thing. Although fans of the podcast will appreciate that it was ordered from... Uh, what's it called again? Grailed, yeah. Grailed, <laughs> <is> Grailed. Very... <laughs> Very, uh, I think it might be something that someone's mom made in Poland. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, I promise it was very affordable and it, it yes, it was, it wasn't cheap. It wasn't cheap, but it wasn't, but it wasn't, it wasn't like a $200 no. shirt of Mario with like bling on going like this. That comes next. That's next. If the show is if the successful, show's a hit, then we take it to the next step. If enough people sign up to No Clip Crew, exactly. They will. We, do. we did get over a thousand followers so far on Noclip Crew. Some people have been saying that I need to do so. Somebody wanted me to play as England and FIFA or something. Or we'll do something for it. But uh, thank you very much. Head over to patreon.com slash Noclip Crew if you want to sign up to our free Patreon. Uh, we got to get out of here because we've all got prior engagements. Um, but thank you all so much for checking out the pod. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.